Okay, so now we're going to consider a fiscal policy. Three aspects of fiscal policy. One, how the budget is formulated. Second, how the debt is related to the deficit. And third, how the deficit itself depends on the state of the economy. Now let's consider how the debt and the deficit are related. Frequently people get the debt and the deficit confused, so let's be very precise. If you take tax revenues and subtract spending, you get a measure of the surplus, and we say it's a surplus if that difference is a positive number. If the difference is a negative number, in which case tax revenues would be less than spending, then we say there's a deficit. Deficit occurs when that difference is negative. When a government runs a deficit, it has to borrow. The debt increases when it borrows. And the little example here shows you what the debt would be at the end of 2013 compared to the end of 2012. So that would be an increase in the debt. The deficit during 2013, whether it's 500 billion or what, would be raising the debt. The deficit takes place during the year 2013, and that raises the debt at the end of the year compared to what it was at the beginning of the year. So that's the relationship between the deficit and the debt. As you run deficits, you must borrow, and that raises the debt. As long as there's a deficit, the debt is rising. If there's a surplus, on the other hand, the debt is falling. We'd like to usually measure the debt relative to some factor that describes how big the economy is. A debt of a certain number of billion in the U.S. means much less than the same size of debt in a small country like Switzerland. So we control for the size of the economy by dividing the debt by GDP. And that gives this idea of a debt to GDP ratio. So let's take a look at the numbers recently to show you what's going on with this of the federal spending and revenues as a percentage of GDP going out into the future. It's a projection made by the Congressional Budget Office. It's made under the assumption that the current law doesn't change, so it's based on current law that the Congress has passed and the President has signed as of this moment. You can see the red line shows spending increasing, but that excludes interest payments. The blue line includes the interest payments, so the gap between the blue and the red line, that is the gap between total spending and non-interest spending, is the amount that's spent on interest payments. Interest payments are, of course, going to be larger when the interest rate is higher, and it's going to be larger when the debt is higher. So both a growing debt and a expected higher interest rates in the future means the gap between total spending and non-interest spending is increasing, as you can see in this picture. Revenues are also shown, they're basically pretty flat as a share of GDP under current law. So you can see the deficit must be increasing according to these projections, that deficit being the difference between the blue and the green line. So let's look at that difference. There it is. That's the deficit now as a percentage of GDP. And you can see it's hovering around 3 or 4% currently, and then it's expected to rise pretty dramatically up to almost 12% of GDP under current law if the law is not changed. A lot of that is because of the growth of Social Security, Medicare, other kinds of so-called entitlement spending, and they're growing more rapidly than revenue, plus the interest payments are rising as well. Now finally, if you take that deficit and find out what the increase in the debt will be, you get this picture, again using the relationship between the deficits and the debt. Here we're dividing the debt by GDP, we've got the federal debt as a percentage of GDP, and now you can see this is rising uh, pretty rapidly as you go into the future, um, around 70, 75% of GDP going up to about 130. Economists have been worried about debt rising too rapidly as a share of GDP. Some say that when it gets above 90 or 100, there's significant risks. Financial crisis, for example, or inflation. Many things can happen at those high levels, so it's best not to get to that level. But as you can see, we're currently projected to go even higher. If you go even further into the future, you get a more worrisome picture. This takes you into the future even further than the other graphs, but also goes into the past, so you can see how it was earlier in the U.S. history. Again, debt as a percentage of GDP is in the picture. If you see the blue line, that's history. Most of the increases in that are during wars. You see the blip in the 1940s, that was World War II. It came down in the 50s and 60s, and it ran up to some extent there in the 80s. And then and recently it started rising again. And then you see the projections. There's a projection made in 2009 by the Congressional Budget Office, CBO. Then there's a new estimate shown in red. That's the projection made in 2013. You may think things have improved because the red line doesn't go up as much as the black line, but the truth is the CBO just decided not to publish the data out so far into the future, so the picture really hasn't changed much at all. And that's one of the reasons why we're still facing fiscal arguments, fiscal debates in the U.S. about what to do with this problem.